Hello everybody, Frodo Adventure here. Um, wanted to take a quick run through of what is in my cook kit. This is actually a dry bag. Um, I use this because I also keep my fuel in here, at least for short trips, uh, you know, up to about five days. Um, so this is not just the cook kit itself, but other accessories that I also use and need for that. Uh, first of all, uh, just a, a small uh, cup to eat out of. Again, this one is not ideal. I'm sure you've heard me say that before on some of the other videos, but um, this is what I have, so that's what I use. Uh, it's just a lightweight cup to eat my oatmeal out of. I prefer to use my main pot, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, only to boil water and not get that uh, messy in any way in case I'm not in a good place to do any actual cleanup. If I'm low on water, I need to get to the next area. Um, I can get this wet, hang it on the outside, of, or dirty, sorry, full of food. I can just kind of wipe it out with dirt or whatever and then just hang it from the outside of my pack. Um, and that way I don't have to worry about it getting everything else all messy and that way the cook kit stays fairly clean by itself. So, simple cup. Uh, fuel bottles. I use um, smaller bottles, multiple of them if necessary, because I find they're easier to pack than one large bottle. Also, if by chance uh, something leaks, a lid leaks, or it gets a crack or whatnot, I fall. Um, if you fall on a large bottle and it splits, you leak all of your fuel. If you split a small bottle, you still have some so you can still make it out. At least that's my theory. I do put them in Ziplocs. So I have a couple of small fuel bottles there. Lexan spoon. Um, I prefer spoons over sporks or whatnot. Just a preference. And bag is empty at that point. All I have left is the actual cook kit itself. Comes in a simple mesh bag. No reason for that other than just a little bit of organization. Keeping the lid from coming off. This is the pot that I use. Uh, this is a Snow Peak 700 uh, milliliter with lid. Um, there's a lot of other brands that work just fine. You can check out Tokes. Um, there's a, a couple of others as well um, that make them slightly less expensive. You can do titanium if you want to spend the money. Stainless steel or aluminum also work. Um, varying levels of performance and of course price. If you're looking for budget, titanium is probably not the way to go. Um, the lid, honestly, I don't use this for anything other than just keeping everything inside. I could probably just stop carrying it. Um, I just figure that I may find some use for it at some point. So inside the actual cook kit, um, small cleaning scrubby. Uh, I just cut one in half from my kitchen bag selection. I keep a one ounce fuel bottle in here. I do that because on cold nights, um, I find that if I, if I keep this on my person or at least inside of my hammock full of fuel, this is uh, exactly one ounce, which is all I need to cook with for an entire meal plus a little extra. Um, but if I can keep it warm, uh, it, it starts a lot easier. Uh, cold alcohol fuel uh, tends to have a little bit of a hard time starting. This is a ferro rod and striker. Um, pretty typical. Just about anything will do here. Um, I try and use this whenever I can uh, to light my stove. I also keep a mini Bic lighter in here. Again for making fires but also just to light the stove. I actually find this is a little Safer to use, I don't have to put my fingers right down there and uh, as close to the fuel. But um, this obviously works great. It's also good for starting a campfire. I have another Bic lighter that I'm not going to show you. I keep it in a separate location just in case I get separated from my cooking supplies. That way I can start a fire in an emergency of needing heat. So two pieces. This is just a, a very thick foil. Um, these are actually a, a, some kind of like a hot bag foil bags that were meant for like, you know, attending a potluck where you need to keep some food hot. Um, it's just thick tin foil. That's all it is. And I folded it one into a little square, which I used to kind of use as a base for setting my stove on. And then another one that's longer and curled that I can actually use as a windscreen. The reason for the windscreen is these alcohol stoves tend not to like the wind. <laughs> so this is my stove. This is uh, the Go Bag uh, alcohol stove. It's a double wall, which means you have to make sure you're only using the correct fuel types. Do not put gasoline in one of these. Very dangerous things can happen. Only use denatured alcohol. Um, this is a wick material. 
Um, I bought a big big spool of it and uh, just put it on with uh, uh, with JB Weld, I believe it was. Uh, this lets me, I'm not going to do it in this video, but after putting the fuel inside, I can then also just put a little around that ring, just kind of squirt a little bit around on that. And then I can just light the outside and that heats the outside of it uh, and then makes it so that the stove will bloom a little quicker. Blooming basically means when the fire is actually coming out of these holes properly and not just burning out of the center. This is uh, an old um, simple little ring that I had from a Sterno stove, I believe it was. It happens to make a really good windscreen like so for when the stove is waiting to bloom so I'm not just wasting the fuel waiting for it. I light it, the outside, and while it's, while it's getting ready and warming up the stove I can actually set my pot on and take advantage of those flames coming off of the stove. Um, once it blooms, then I can just grab the stove, remove the ring, and drop it where it's supposed to be, which extinguishes the center and just lets those side vents actually burn and save fuel. Uh, in a day that's anything above, say, 45 degrees, I don't even need to use this. It blooms so fast, I don't even need to worry about it. So, windscreen just wraps around like that. I leave a little gap, usually on the side of the handles when I put the stove on. So I'll set it down like that. That way I can still grab the handle, pull it off the stove easily. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate the actual stove. I'll do that in a comparison video with all the different stoves types once I have them all back from being loaned out. Um, and then I can kind of show the differences. But this is my preferred method right here uh, using an alcohol stove. I only do this on trips of say four or five days or less. Uh, once I go beyond that, the jet boil or some other method tends to actually be more efficient on weight uh, because I don't have to carry as much fuel. Um, use about one ounce per meal, you figure that all out. Once you get to the point of wanting to make a hot cocoa and such every now and then, you get to about four or five days, it's quite a lot of fuel and beyond that the fuel starts to actually get heavier than what you would if you use a little canister stove like a jet boil. Um, so that's when I switch over and uh, use that instead because it's way more efficient. Um, however on weight, five days and below, this beats a jet boil hands down. Fairly inexpensive. Uh, to give you an idea, this little guy is 15 bucks um, and quite frankly it's one of the more sturdy and I don't know if complicated is the right word but uh, more engineered of the of the devices. You can make an alcohol stove out of a can of cat food, clear the cat food out. Uh, there's tons of videos on, on the net about that. So if you want a really cheap option and you have cats, or even if you don't, buy yourself a can of cat food and uh, check out the videos online. You'll be able to build one for a couple dollars at most. Um, denatured alcohol you can buy from hardware stores. Um, any, any place that has a paint shop, Home Depot, Lowe's, that kind of thing. Um, you can also buy heat in the yellow bottle. Not the red bottle, the yellow bottle, which is a fuel additive most often used in the winter. Um, you can buy that at most gas stations. So, uh, that's it for my cook kit. Frodo Adventure out.